The periodic table of elements is made up of metals, metalloids, and nonmetals. There are ionic bonds, and then there are covalent bonds. An ionic bond is made between a metal and a nonmetal. For example, sodium and fluorine, which is a metal and a nonmetal, sodium fluoride. We have to find the electronegativity of sodium, so we have to look on the electronegativity chart. We see that sodium, Na, is 0 0.9. Now we have to find the electronegativity of fluorine. We look back to the chart and we see that it is 4.0. Now we have to find the difference. So how do you find the difference? To find the difference, you have to subtract 4.0 and 0 0.9, and you get 3.1. So it is ionic. And we can check this on this chart, which is, shows that it is ionic. Hooray! Next is a covalent bond. It is between a nonmetal and a nonmetal. There are two types, polar and nonpolar. First example is bromine and oxygen. They are both nonmetals. We have to find the electronegativity of bromine. So we look on the chart and it is 2.8. Now we have to find the electronegativity of oxygen. So we again must look at the chart. And on the chart, we find that it is 3.5. Now, after this, we have to find the difference. So we subtract 3.5 and 2.8, and we get 0.7. BRO is a polar covalent bond because its electronegativity is 0.7. We can check this on the chart, and we see that it is a polar covalent bond. Next example is chlorine and bromide, both nonmetals. We have to find the electronegativity of Cl. So we look on the chart, and we see that it is 3.0. Next, we have to find the electronegativity of Br. We look on the chart and it is 2.8. Once again, we have to find the difference and we get 0 0.2. So that says that ClBr is a nonpolar covalent bond because its electronegativity is 0.2. We check on the chart, and that is correct. Hooray! Now let's stop talking about ionic and covalent bonds and have some fun. There are some experiments that I want to show you. This first experiment is done with a candle, water, food coloring, and a glass cup. So what happens is that the oxygen inside of the glass cup is burned off by the flame of the candle. To take up the space, the water gets sucked into the cup to take the space of the oxygen that was burned off. Cool, right? On to another experiment. It's done with vegetable oil, water, food coloring, and alka seltzers, which can be found at any CVS or Walmart, places like that. So, what happens in this experiment is that the vegetable oil floats on top of the water because it is less dense than the water. Put in the food coloring and shake it up a bit 
to get the food coloring to mix with the water. <laughs> After this is done, we get to the fun part. We add the Alka-Seltzer and watch what happens. By putting the cap onto the container, we have sealed it off from anything getting out or going in, which was probably a bad idea because the Alka-Seltzer and the water create a gas, which causes the water bottle to expand. As you can see, the water bottle is expanding. After this was done, I had to take the risk of removing the cap, which was very painful because it popped. So we tried it again, this time without the cap. So if you ever want to make yourself a cute little lava lamp, this is an easy way to do it. What happens is that the Alka-Seltzer, which creates a gas, gets lifts up the green water that's under the oil, lifts it up through the oil, releases it up at the top where you can see the bubbling, and then floats back down again because water is less dense than oil. The end. Thanks for watching.